Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for joining me today. My name is Janine McGowan, and I designed Cross Stitch as the blue flower, and it's been three weeks since our last video because I have finally learned that the weekend after market is not a good weekend to do a floss tube. So this year, for the first time, I just assumed that I wouldn't and took the extra week and actually got my market things done. There's still a little, little market chaos around the house and in the office, and I still have some paperwork to do, but it's mostly done, and it's nice to be back to more normal activity levels. So starting today with a bang, we have one stitching in action, and it is so good, I'm actually kind of holding off for the big reveal of this one. So I have never seen anything like this. I got this email from Penny, and she said that she was taking a class from the Notorious Needle, or I guess a video on floss tube, and she started watching it, and she learned the technique, and she did it, and this is what she did. The Notorious Needle has this YouTube class on how to stitch on a t-shirt, and I love it. I love it so much, and since I generally wear just plain t-shirts every day, this is definitely something that I am going to be looking into as soon as I have time. So if you're interested, The Notorious Needle on Floss Tube, and thank you so much, Penny. It came out beautifully. I love everything about it. Thank you so much for sharing that with us. As always, if you've stitched a blue flower design, just drop me an email, and I would love to showcase it here and on the web so that other people can be inspired by what you've done. So I just, I couldn't be happier about this. It's so much fun. All right, what I'm stitching, nothing, <laughs> nothing. I haven't, I think so much as picked up a needle since before market, but pretty soon I'll be able to do that again and I'm really looking forward to it. So we're just gonna go into Stash Spotlight, which when I'm at market, I tend to pick up a lot of stuff and carry it home with me. And I don't know if you can see, but this tote bag from Beth Twist was full of market stuff. So in order not to have it be overwhelming because there are new fabrics, there are new threads, and I pick up a lot of those things. I also get charts for myself, a lot of things to give away. And so it's just a lot of stuff and I don't want the video to be, hey, look at the stuff. So I thought I'd break it up a little bit. And today I'm just gonna talk about the tools that I picked up. And I'm gonna start with this awesome little travel case I actually got this to go to market. I didn't get it at market and it's from, oh gosh, I'm gonna get it right here. Let's see, Studia Natalie K on Etsy and I'll put the info in the notes as well. But it's this great little case. It's got places to store your bobbins, places to store your needle, the bobbin that you're working on, other notions. I'm not doing a very good job holding this up here a latched pocket for your scissors, your pencils. You can put your stitching on its hoop in here or on its Q-snap, your chart in here. There's a little zipper in the back. And so this is a great option for me when I'm traveling. I, I really like this. So that's my first wonderful tool because it's always tough for me to take my needle work with me in a way that's compact and yet has everything I need, but also has it safely. So that's my newest thing and I'm very excited about it. Next up, I got some beautiful pins from Puntini Puntini because she always makes the most wonderful pins. But I think my favorite, and it's gonna be hard to do this without the reflection, is this set of little garden ones. Oh my gosh, those are so cute. It's got all the little things and it's just so beautiful. So yeah, I love those so much. <laughs> all right, next up, I got some bobbins. These are from Heartstring Samplery and they might not be as, like I wouldn't take them on to travel, for instance, because they could be a little bit delicate, but I love them. Look at the little sheep and the butterfly and the moth. They're just so pretty. Oh, her husband makes the most beautiful things. I, I just can't even with those. Okay, next up, again, I don't want to spend too much time on this, but I got a couple of pair of scissors from the Scissorist, partly because their room is next to ours, so I get to feed my scissor addiction. This pair is curved, which I thought would be really handy for some of those times when you're trying to get a nice close snip and I always make such good scissors. You know, they come in a nice little leather sheath here. So 
it's easy to keep them safe for the once in a while when you need to use that particular design. The other pair I got, also in this great little sheath for safety, are these Lady Liberty version. And you can see they've got the lady and the lamp, and they're a nice pair of scissors. I've used these, not this particular design, but their scissors quite a bit. So that's that. They're always, always rewarding to use. The final thing that I got, this is from Stitchy Pros, and they call it a cross stitch buddy. And it's basically sort of a cross stitcher's version of a quilter's ruler. So here it is, but it's got all these great features. That's got these little divots here, depending on how you want to loop your thread for specific lengths, you can use this to wrap it around. It's got corner gauges. I think I holding it upside down. So there we go. That'll be easier for you. It's got, if you want to determine what stitch count you have, it's got notes about what else you can use and for your edges. It's got finishing formulas. It's got a ruler. It's got a needle size gauge if you need to try and figure out what size your needle is. It's pretty cool. And it's got a little hook on it so I can clip it, or not clip it, hang it on the nail with my other quilting rulers. And that's just a fun little tool to have around for a lot of different applications. I wouldn't travel with it, but it's great to have in my stitching room. So that is the first round of what I hauled home from market and just some useful tools that I look forward to using in the coming year. World around. Now this year when I was at market, I actually caught a little video of what I believe to be an Eastern gray squirrel. So we're going to pretend it's an Eastern gray squirrel. And if it's not, it's just going to be masquerading as an Eastern gray squirrel. I actually grew up pretty much everywhere I've lived has had squirrels except where I live right now. And I know they exist certainly in Northern Nevada, but they're not something I tend to see around my home. And so it's always a treat to go somewhere and see them. I think when I was looking things up about squirrels, I read that squirrels are second only to birds in how appealing they are to people as wildlife that they want to go out and see. So, Eastern gray squirrels, the first thing I learned is that they eat pretty much everything. Now I knew they eat nuts and seeds and I didn't know <laughs> that they also eat flowers and buds as well as insects, eggs, even some frogs, pretty much whatever they can find. So yeah, I learned that they're very important as though they even eat fungus, which wow. <laughs> Did not see that coming. They are very important as it's called seed predators, but they take the seeds, they eat them, they scatter them around. And so they move plants from staying in just one location to being distributed more widely, which is really important for them. They live in pretty much the whole of the Eastern US. They used to be back in the 1700s so numerous that people talked about seeing actually, and I should have looked up the collective noun for squirrels, but large groups of them traveling together and just eating everything, almost like locusts. But by the mid 1800s, because of habitat loss and um, hunting, they had become much more rare to the point where if a squirrel appeared in New York City, there a crowd would form to watch them, which I, I thought was kind of cool. Now, New York City in particular has done a lot of work specifically to reintroduce the Eastern Gray Squirrel so that now they have a thriving squirrel population within the parks in New York City and they're so common, but at one point they were so rare that they were they were a novelty that people would be excited to come and see. Apparently they used to have a much darker coat because their primary predators were from the air and so the darker coat allowed them to blend in with the ground. But then when humans began hunting them and hunting them from the ground, you know, looking up towards trees, they developed this lighter um, sort of mixed gray-brown coat that gives them camouflage from both directions. So that's an effect that we have had on them as well. Now, they are pretty amazing. They can run up to 15 miles an hour, which is incredible. They can leap eight feet, over eight feet even. And considering that they're less than a foot in, in length themselves, that's pretty remarkable. Female Eastern Gray Squirrels can have babies by the time they're six months old and they have up to two litters a year. They make a nest out of branches and leaves and it's generally very high up in a tree for safety. And they have these babies in there 
the nest is apparently separate from their regular home. So they make a nest specifically for the babies. They live there while they're having the babies. And it was mentioned that a mother with babies is generally avoided by all the other squirrels because she won't tolerate any interference in that, which is not surprising. Let's see. They have a wonderful sense of smell, not just because, as we probably know, they'll take their nuts and seeds and seeds and food and cache it, so bury it or store it somewhere, and they need to be able to find that again. The sense of smell is one of the ways that they do that. But they also can learn about their fellow squirrels through a sense of smell, including things like their stress levels, which is kind of remarkable. I had no idea. So that's just a little bit about the Eastern Gray Squirrel. I don't know if you can see them where you are, but maybe you can see them or a different squirrel to take a minute and appreciate just how cool they are. All right, questions. Last video, I was asking what you're really looking forward to stitching, and I got some great answers. Thank you. This time, the question is, what is your favorite garden plant? I'm working on a summer garden design, and I was just curious. What's your favorite plant to grow because it's reliable, to eat because it's delicious? You know, just what do you enjoy coming from the garden in the summer? Or do you just enjoy seeing beautiful flowers in your garden? That's great too. I'd like to know. All right, best thing. It is so wonderful to be home again. I I don't love traveling. It's not the easiest for me. I, I find being around people in airports particularly quite stressful. And so it's always a little bit exhausting to be on the road. And then when I get to come home, I'm so happy. And even better, as much as I like to be in the place that I've traveled to, like market or a retreat, by the time I get on the plane, I just want to come home. And I want to see my animals. And I have to say, Rye this year, when I came in the front door, she was buzzing herself practically off the ground with excitement. I've honestly never seen her just tremble with excitement quite that much. So it was great to just wrap myself up in her and pet the animals and get sniffed all over and where have you been and what have you been doing and then get to sleep in my own bed and cuddle with them. It was it was a real treat. I do I do really love coming home. All right, on to giveaways. Last video is this great Hester Garlic chart from Little Robin Designs. The word was bird for so many of you. Excellent bird comments. And the winner is Red Panda Homebody. So drop me a message, let me know your address, and I will send that to you. Now this time, giveaway is going to be one of these great pairs of scissors that I picked up at market. So this was bought for giveaway. And this is, again, the pair of Lady Liberty scissors from the Scissorist. Use the word lady in your comments just to make it a little bit easier. And uh, we will draw the winner on that one for the next video. Okay, announcements. It's actually kind of a few this time. First off, when I got to market, I was pretty tired. And it took me a little bit to kind of get, get back to normal energy levels. I'm pretty fortunate that I have a good friend who goes with me. And so she, she took care of me, <laughs> made sure I ate and didn't lift things that were too heavy when my back was acting up. And so I'm really, really appreciative of that. But it made me realize that I've been pushing a little bit too hard. And it's hard not to because I love cross stitch and I want to do more of it. But I also have a job. And I've let myself commit to a few too many things lately. So I'm going back to my hard rule of one public event per year that I'm willing to travel to. Now, for this year I have two scheduled and for next year I have one scheduled, which means I am not committing to new public events until 2026, which means if you want to get together with me at an event, you have three options. And the first one is Quilter Station next month. And I'm going to actually put this in the newsletter and on socials as well, just in case you're, you're looking for something to do. I have the model for that back and I'm very excited about it. So I can't wait to, to see everyone that I get to see when I'm at Quilter Station. This fall, I'll be at Shepherd's Needle. And then next spring, I will be at the Sunshine State Stitchers event in Florida. And that's it until 2026. So I'm going to be much more limited on what I can commit to, just so that I still have time to design and not be worn out when I get to an event. Because I want to get there and bring my best and not bring just 
tire jenny so that's the first announcement the second one and i don't know if this qualifies as an announcement but i had this great idea that i was going to do a lot of photos i'm notorious for going to market and not taking any photographs at all so <laughs> the only way you could show that i was there was by other people's photos so this year i was going to do a whole like here's the hotel room here's lots of pictures of us setting up here's lots of pictures of us visiting here's the final product and I completely missed the boat on that. But I did take pictures of the before and pictures of the after. So I'm going to take just a quick minute here. I'm going to insert that video so you can get a sense, just a little peek of what it looks like to transform a hotel room from just a, a suite into the market booth. And then I'll be back with the final announcement. Now the final announcement is that I am going to be at the Jingle Ball this fall, or I'm sorry, this winter. So I'm very excited and I know you may have seen already some announcements from the other people. It's a wonderful lineup and I'm not spoiling anyone else's announcement and we may still do announcement social media officially because Steph's so good at that. But in the spirit of my getting more ahead of things and not being too last minute, not getting behind on my work. I want to know from you, what would you like to have as a class so that I can get started very early? If there's a project you want to learn how to do, if there's a technique that you've always wanted to try, let me know in your comments, drop me a message, whatever you think, and it will at least give me time to, to figure out what people want to have a class in and maybe learn how to do it myself so I can teach it. So that's it for me. This was a nice long video and we've got a proper puppy video at the end because I was gone for three weeks or because I was three weeks in between videos. So it's been lovely catching up with you. I'm looking forward to seeing you again in two weeks and I hope you have a lovely weekend. Thank you so much for joining me.